Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio. And this week, I'm actually getting around to finishing a project that I started a long time ago. Well, here we have a Bachman passenger coach, which I have cut down to about 20 feet long. Um, out of the box, they're about 34 feet long. And this is a project that I started a long time ago because I wanted a, a shorty little coach to run on the Thunder Mesa line. And I uh, cut down the roof and uh, the body and uh, the frame. And then I stopped working on it and I got involved with other things. Starting with a stock ON30 Bachman coach, I made cuts in the body and roof as indicated here by the red lines. Those sections were then removed and the car was reassembled at the cut lines, filing, sanding, and filling with squadron putty for a good fit. I primed the car and then painted it with spray enamels, carefully masking for a fancy two-tone green look. The roofing was done with strips of black gaffer's tape, which does a nice job of simulating canvas. Then Thunder Mesa decals were added and the entire car was dry brushed with acrylics to give it some age and wear. Long story short, I uh, ended up cutting about um, four and five eighths inches uh, from the overall length to shorten this up. But when I did it, I made a mistake. I, uh, I cut the floor, I cut the extra material right out of the middle of the floor, which put the bolsters too close together <laughs> for the trucks. Hey, you know, it was my, it was my first time. Um, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to build a new frame uh, for the car. I'm going to reuse the step ends here so I don't have to rebuild those. But I'm going to basically scratch build a new frame for this. And I've got some, uh, some car uh, railing ends from Wiseman Model Service. Nice white metal casting. And uh, I've got some very nice Central Valley HO heavyweight uh, passenger trucks, which I'm going to use. And uh, let me just show you how those compare. This is the, uh, the ON30 trucks that come on the Bachman cars, and you can see the size difference. These are a little bit smaller, but I think they'll look pretty cool on this shorty little car. And I'll have a, a little bit shorter wheelbase so it'll be easier to fit them under the new frame. So, without any further ado, let's build a new frame. First thing I want to do is cut off these steps from the end here. And I'll probably just use a razor saw to do that. Cut it off even with these, uh, these tabs right here that uh, lock into the body. Fortunately, this plastic it's pretty easy to cut with a razor saw. Next thing I want to do is cut off just these ends here up to where the floor meets the steps because that's going to be replaced with some O scale 4x6. All right, now I'll use my files and some sandpaper to make sure this is all nice and square and uh, will still fit underneath the car body. Well, I've taken some measurements and made a scale drawing of my uh, frame here on some grid paper and laminated it to some foam core so I can build the frame right on top of this. I built the frame from O scale 4x6 and 6x12 basswood lumber, doing my very best to keep everything nice and square. Then the Bachman car ends and steps were glued into place with cyanoacrylate, and the whole frame was painted with Rust-Oleum dark brown camouflage. Before I go too much further, I want to temporarily mount the trucks to make sure that uh, everything clears, they swing clearly and uh, don't get hung up on anything if there's any need for adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for the screws. Um, I'm going to use these... Uh, these small brass wood screws. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the size off the top of my head. 
they were in my scrap box and they fit so <laughs> I'm going to use them and a couple of small washers that I also had so all right let's see how we did here okay let's check the coupler height here All right, no problems there, and that's the sharpest curve on the railroad, so I think we're good. Before I move on to the floor and the interior benches, um, I want to add a couple of truss rods. I, I put this queen post on here, and now I'm going to make a couple of little pillow blocks for the truss rod to run over, and I'm just going to use this a little piece of, uh, what is this? 16th by 16th by the, yeah, about a 3 by 3 in uh, low scale. All right. Now, the trick is you take a brown Sharpie. Yep. We're pulling out all the tricks here. Brown Sharpie and you color that with the brand sharpie. And it gives it just that right kind of rusty old metal look. The pillow blocks were installed on the queen post with yellow glue. Then black thread, held in place with CA, was used to model the truss rods themselves. <laughs> One other thing I want to do before I install the floor is um, add some weight. Uh, get the center of gravity down on this car, make it track better. And I've got some old car weights from those old uh, roundhouse kits. A lot of you remember those. Well, I've got some of the weights from those kits right here, and they just happen to fit. So I'm going to glue those to the frame, and then we'll build the floor over the top of that. Okay, well, we've created a floor now for our passenger car. I used some 132nd inch thick, very thin, um, scribed basswood, and I had to elevate it up uh, above these, uh, these built-in weights on some scale uh, 4x4s. So I think, without any further ado, we're ready to glue that into place. Now, one thing I really want to have in my car is interior lighting. What I would like is the look of a single kerosene lantern. Small car like this, that's about all you'd need. And there are numerous ways to achieve this. Uh, one, um, the more traditional way is passenger trucks like this, like these Century Valley trucks, often have a metal tab here that you can solder a wire to and bring power up from the rails to uh, to light your lamp. So what I had the idea to do is take one of these. This is one of those uh, battery powered votive candles that you can get at, at you know the drugstore for next to nothing and they last forever. Uh, well, nearly forever, a long time. They last a long time. Uh, the LEDs draw very little power. It's got an on-off switch. And uh, I've already disassembled this one. And we'll just mount it inside the car like this using um, the existing infrastructure here and adding some supports. I believe I can uh, mount it right there in the middle where I want it and have it completely hidden inside the car. Okay, now I'm just going to basically paint this whole thing black, everything but the bulb, which I'm going to mask off with a little bit of tape. And now I think I'm ready to glaze the windows, and I'm just going to reuse the uh, glazing from the Bachman car 
is already sized to fit in here. I'm also going to reuse the, uh, the stock Bachman stove, which I cut out of the floor of the original car, giving it a new paint job and uh, a little dry brushing to bring some of the detail out. Put that right in the corner here. Now for the seats, I didn't want to reuse the, the plastic cast-in Bachman uh, coach seats, so I took some measurements and uh, made some that I could cut on the laser. Pretty, pretty basic, pretty simple. And they'll look great when uh, painted and look through the viewed through the windows of the coach. So I made one. I need to make uh, about nine more. So better get on that. The coach seats were all assembled. Then each was painted dark brown with traditional red backs and seats. Small dabs of Eileen's tacky glue on each of the seat legs secured them to the floor of the coach. The next thing I want to do is create some blinds for these windows. And I'm going to make that out of this uh, good old manila file folder paper. You can see I've used it for before for other things. So I'm going to cut a um, half inch wide strip and then cut that into different lengths to uh, simulate the blinds at different lengths in the window. Then it was time to start adding some passengers. I chose a few seated individuals from an inexpensive Chinese bulk pack of figures and gave some of them hats made from small circles of Bristol board. Then each one was repainted to better reflect the correct garments and colors of the period. All right, we got our passengers. Looks like fellow in the green pants might be in a little bit of trouble. Sheriff and his deputies are Taking a good long look at them. <laughs> now the last thing I want to do for the interior is create um, a lavatory right here. Basically just a couple of walls is all I'm going to do. I'm going to use some scrap uh, 16th inch basswood to build two little partition walls here. And then I can look at uh, finishing this car up. Well I want my car to be a little, a little funky so I mean, it's already a little funky. I want it to be a little more funky. Uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a ladder up the side here and a luggage rack up on top with some cool little things in it. Uh, but the first thing I have to do is build the ladder. Yeah, I'm going to fast forward through the construction of the ladder here. As it later turned out, the one I scratch built was too thick and created some clearance issues with the car. So, regretfully, it was replaced with a thinner bar mills ladder on the final model. Now, to build the luggage rack for the roof, I've pre-cut and stained some O-scale uh, 2x4s and 1x6s. And I could describe how I'm going to build it, or I could just let you watch me do it as I figure it out as I go along. So, here we go. Even though the idea of a luggage rack on the roof is wacky and totally freelanced, I did try to give it a veneer of believability with a design that looks like it might have been built from oak by the car shop crews. All right, we've got our, uh, <laughs> our luggage rack done and I can start adding some details to it. I've got um, this is a crate full of uh, live chickens. That's pretty cool. This comes from Model Tech Studios. I painted it. I painted all of this stuff. Uh, we've got a barrel, we've got some various luggage, a bag of mail, also from Model Tech Studios. So start uh, detailing the roof now, adding a few things. I do have to be careful about clearances. I don't want to have things stacked too high up because there's some low clearances on the layout and uh, I'd actually like to be able to run this car. So start uh, Gluing some of this stuff into place. I do believe it's time to put the uh, the end rails on.
Okay. Now I'll put on the trucks and the couplers. And I think we can take her out for a spin. Well, I took the coach for a test on the layout, and there's good news and bad news. The good news is it looks great. <laughs> the bad news is, as I feared, I've got some clearance issues, primarily with this fancy smoke jack that I like. So I'm going to have to swap that out for the original Bachman smoke jack, quite a bit uh, lower. I've also had to rearrange some of the items up here on the roof uh, so they'll clear the tunnel portals. Don't want the chickens getting knocked off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, swap out this smoke jack and uh, that should solve the problems. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Thunder Mesa Mining Company is proud to present, in her first appearance anywhere, Coach Number 2. Well, what do you know? The girl's a natural. Let's see how those lights look. Yeah, I think that'll work. This funky little car was a rewarding build, with more than a couple of challenges to overcome. More so maybe because I went into it thinking it would be quick and easy. It wasn't, but the result does make for a welcome and unique addition to Thunder Mesa's roster. Thanks for watching, amigos. Adios for now. <laughs>